Pat Wetworth is uh, one of my distinguished surgical colleagues. He's one of my heroes. Uh, he's, I've always asked him through the years to be my shopping coach, but he's refused because he knows he dressed best, better than I do. But Pat, welcome to San Antonio. I think you literally just got off an airplane, right? Yes, sir. Thank uh, you. All right. And I know while you're here, you're excited about some things you're going to be doing here. And what are some of the highlights and things that you're going to be sharing or doing or thinking that's going to come out of San Antonio? Well, I'm, only, I'm mostly here to listen this year. Uh, I am excited about our uh, Z1071 study. Right. And by the way, there was a news release on that today. And as one of the people, and I've highlighted a little bit about that, but you as one of the movers and shakers in Z11, uh, you want to comment uh, about uh, this particular uh, trial because I think it's really important. It, yes, I think it is. And, and it, just you know, give our colleagues a, sort of an overview quickly uh, the trial design and what have you. Yeah, the, this is a, originally an ACASOG study, Z1071, and the notion was can you trust the sentinel lymph node after neoadjuvant chemotherapy? Right. Uh, for many years, most of us advocated doing sentinel node staging then neoadjuvant chemotherapy, right. and then surgery. And right. over time, we've all, well, most of us have shifted to sentinel node staging after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Yeah, as, lo as long as we knew the nodes weren't positive, is that a fair statement up front? Or, or have you been doing it even with known positive nodes up front? Either way, okay. um, uh, but with nodes positive up front, there wasn't, in fact, there was data to the contrary. There right. wasn't good data to suggest we could trust the sentinel node. Right if the nodes had been positive with a fine needle aspiration biopsy or perhaps a core, core biopsy, biopsy right. up front, there was some data from an MD Anderson study, some data uh, from uh, a couple of other neoadjuvant trials where it looked like the false negative rate was too high. Right. So uh, the authors of those studies got together and in some discussions you know, said we're not really happy with the way we uh, conducted these studies, we really would like to see a formal study yep. uh, done with really careful sentinel node technique uh, instead of just uh, sort of take the node out and then do an right. axillary dissection. Right. So Judy Bowie leading the group with originally American College of Surgeons Oncology Group and now the Alliance right. uh, put together a trial looking at, at that very question. Okay. So uh, she presented this, these results today and what she found was, um, you know, not a home run. Right. but some qualified success in that uh, the false negative rate when two sentinel nodes were removed right. was around 12%. Right. And that is very close to what multi-institutional trials well, It's a have little bit over, but it, it's close. I agree with you. Yeah. It is a little bit over. Uh, the thing that many of us sort of realized about halfway through the study was that uh, a, a way to really make better... Uh, make more certain that we were getting the proper node right. was to put a marker in yep. that node when we did the biopsy yep. and then to use ultrasound or perhaps even uh, x-ray or whatever to yeah. pick that node out to make certain right. the right. node that was positive up front was yep. the node we were removing as yep. a sentinel node. Yep. Unfortunately, um, we figured that out part way through. It was an option in the study. We haven't analyzed the data with that okay. particular subset and my guess is that will be sort of an ideal approach. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, another study that uh, will follow on to that study will relate more to axillary management where patients may have uh, radiation right. or axillary dissection. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sure you struggle with this issue. We struggle at my institution with this issue. We do a lot of neoadjuvant chemo. We do. And uh, especially in our node pod. In fact, at my institution, uh, uh, many of our node positive patients up front, big tumors, and you, I'm an MRI guy, so if we can see you know, two, three, or four or more lymph nodes, we're probably talking about neoadjuvant. Often these are the ER and PR negative patients or the HER2 new positives. The ER uh, negatives and HER2 new positives can have dramatic results with yes. neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Then the dilemma comes, all right, now, do we do an axillary dissection? And and Tom Julian was just sitting here, and do we really then, if they have a complete pathologic response, we need to really then go on and do radiation therapy, which just now increased the morbidity of lymphedema probably conservatively to 30% or more. So I, I think this is really a pivotal and important contribution at this meeting. 
I do think it's important, and I want to I want to echo what you said about the work that the NSABP has done on right. this topic. Terry Maminus and then and Tom is part of that group as right. well. Recently, in fact, just this month, published their B18 and B27 right. results, right. and it really suggests a way to make decisions, informed decisions about these patients in terms of who needs adjunctive radiation therapy. Um, most of us try to avoid doing a formal axillary dissection and then radiating the yeah. axilla itself. That's right. On the other hand, patients who have a positive node yep. after neoadjuvant chemotherapy clearly uh, should benefit from supraclavicular yep. and chest wall radiation. Yep. So yep. we're yep. getting, I think we're getting consensus there. Um, the issue is what to do if you have, uh, if you've done neoadjuvant chemotherapy and you have a positive node after, and this is in the patients who had um, a positive note up front, or right. even in a, in a patient who has a positive right. note after right. with no with clinically negative up front. Um, most people would say, and I think the right answer for the test yeah. and for the boards is axillary dissection yep. along with adjunctive right. radiation. But frankly, I think that uh, an argument can be made, and we'll have this dialogue as the next few years go by, that you can simply do that sentinel note. If the rest of the nodes are clinically uninvolved, clinically negative, no right. gross disease, right. you've documented that that patient has microscopic, at least, disease residual after neoadjuvant chemotherapy, you know she's going to get adjunctive supraclav and adjunctive yep. chest wall, yep. and then you can radiate the axilla without yep. doing an axillary dissection, yep. still get control of the axilla. Yep. Yep. So that's really, okay. um, outside of a trial, that's my strategy right now. It's a little complicated. I, when I try to explain it, I managed to get it okay. across properly half the time. And then do you want to comment a little bit about, let's say, as an example, the oncotype uh, profiling and node-positive patients? And you, you've been very involved with that assay and where you see that going in node-positive patients. Yes, I was uh, really lucky to be involved through ACASOG with the original Taylor X study in node-negative patients, and that closed in October last year and 10,000 patients and yep. so we're going to get some interesting information from that study. Actually it was October two years ago. Yeah, right? it's actually two years so, ago. So um, exactly. the data that Kathy Albain has presented and um, represented a, a time or two, especially looking at breast cancer specific survival shows precisely the same phenomenon that we saw in node negative patients yeah. and it makes perfect biological okay. sense. Okay. And that was that if you have a low recurrence score. Yep and a positive node, right. you still don't have chemosensitivity. Yep. And you have a worse prognosis, and certainly patients with four or more positive nodes are even worse. Sure. One to three are okay. a little bit worse. But as you get down in the mid to low 20s on an oncotype right. score, you stop seeing chemosensitivity. Right. Now, let's just say for a moment that's a fact. Yep. And we say everybody knows it, everybody accepts it's a fact. Um, okay, let's stop treating patients with chemotherapy who have three positive nodes. Well, you're going to give a heart attack right. to most of the medical oncologists and right. surgical oncologists we know. So right. for us to catch up with that yep. thinking is going to take a while. We are already in the business in my practice and off-study patients who are postmenopausal, one or two positive nodes, we are making decisions based okay. on that assay. Okay. But we are strong, strong supporters of the uh, new responder trial, one right. or three positive nodes, right. premenopausal right. Yep. or postmenopausal. Okay below 25 randomized. Okay. Um, uh, well, Pat, let's just assume hypothetically that we've just had some people join us here in the last couple of minutes, sort of summarizing your wonderful, con you're always so articulate, I love listening to you, <laughs> Thanks, and, and you give good information, man, so I love it. What's sort of the take-home summary of, of what you know is going on here and what you anticipate to come out of this meeting? Well, I think we're getting more refined indications and um, decision making for patients who are getting neoadjuvant okay. treatment. And I think neoadjuvant treatment is clearly going to lead us to a new place both in terms of research and yep. uh, determining which treatments are most effective, but also how to be kind about these patients who are generally at higher risk and how to get just as good of results with less morbidity, we hope. Okay. Maybe right. even better results. All right. And, uh, you know, the, uh, there's some other news I'm sure you've yeah. highlighted from the day that has yeah. to do with tamoxifen treatment yeah. for 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Yeah, I think that's going to be a big story, Pat. I really do. Well, listen, literally off an airplane, right into here, plop down, your usual <laughs> articulate, wonderful self. I thank you for stopping by. I'm going to turn it back over to Todd as he wraps up this hour for us. Okay. Mm -hmm.